I've looked at quite a few little TV boxes on this channel over the last couple of years, and you guys always seem to really enjoy it, so why not take a look at one that Google is really putting some money behind, the brand new Xiaomi Mi Box. Let's take a look at it. Now one of the big reasons that I actually went ahead and picked this little guy up, obviously it's got things included like Google Cast built right into it, 4K Ultra HD support, a voice search remote included, has built in Android TV, latest and greatest version, but also it came with $76 worth of free offers as well as because I bought it through walmart.com, free movies and a couple of free months of Sling TV and just a ridiculous amount of stuff. Basically more than enough stuff to actually almost pay off the device. The device itself was like $70, $80, something like that. And it came with like $80 to $90 of included offers and stuff. So it's really hard to say no for me. Actually, here's some of the offers that are included just detailed. So $50 credit for Sling TV. In addition, I got two free months of Sling TV direct from Walmart for this. $5 movies and TV credit included, one month of CBS All Access, three months of Pandora free trial, and just all in all, it looks like a very nice, well-rounded, well-designed box. I will admit it, I took a look at the previous generation Xiaomi Mi Box and it was not an amazing experience. Everything was in Chinese and I just had problems with it. This one, I've seen other people doing videos about and it looks extremely promising. So let's not waste any more time and dive in, if the box will open. There we go. So first up, you have the box itself. We'll come right back to that. You've got a little booklet here with all the free offers, which I will keep for myself. A little booklet that says Me Box that gives you what's in the box and installation guide and everything. Warranty and support information, as well as just product information. HDMI cable, doesn't look like it's extremely long, but better than not having one. Wall wart, not micro USB. That's a little bit of a bummer for me, but still it's included and that's what's important. And it says the output is 5.2 volts at 2.1 amps. So technically they're pretty close there. They probably could have done micro USB but there's no reason to complain about it. And last but certainly not least is the remote. Actually kind of looks like an Amazon Fire TV remote, but just quite a bit bigger with included batteries. Cannot say it enough. It's very nice when they include the batteries. And then finally, circling back around here is the Xiaomi Mi Box. Actually less of a box and more of just a disc, but there's not a whole lot to it. Just on the back, you have your power input. You have a USB port, HDMI, and a three and a half millimeter audio input. Serial number and information on the bottom and what looks to be a little IR receiver on the front. So actually this has got a teeny tiny little footprint. You're gonna be able to put this in pretty much whatever setup you've got and it's not gonna take up a huge amount of space. This is about the same thickness as a laptop would be, but only about maybe an eighth of the size of a laptop and provides an awful lot of functionality. And I think without any further ado, it's time to go ahead and hook it up, set it up and see what it can do. And we're ready to walk through setup. I have already gone ahead and set up the remote with this. The recording failed a couple of times, so oops. So we'll choose English. Now it's asking if I have an Android phone or tablet. I do, but if you do use that, it, it just has you use the Google app to go ahead and set it up. I'm gonna do this as if I don't have one, just in case you don't. And so what it's gonna do is walk me through the Wi-Fi setup process. You can see here it does support my five gigahertz network as well as my 2.4. I'm gonna use the 2.4 just for better signal strength than wherever it happens to be in the house. And just a second later, we're connecting to the Wi-Fi network. I will say typing on that was a bit of a bear, but we connected successfully. Now we're gonna reach out to Google. And again, we're given the option to use our phone, our laptop, or just use the Google username and password to sign in. In this case, I think I'll use my phone or my laptop. That was fairly straightforward. Basically just had to go to a website, put in that pin that it displayed and choose which Gmail account I wanted to use. No problem. So we'll accept the terms of service. Yes, we wanna use location, even though it shouldn't be. Sure, let's help improve Android TV and finish says the USB drive is connected. I do have that connected just in case. We can browse it, we can set it up as internal storage, or we can eject it. So browsing it, you can see it has 117 gigs of total space, whereas the internal storage of this device is only 5.1 gigs. I guess I'll just eject it because it's complaining about it. So here's our default Android TV interface. You can see some recommendations here at the top. It doesn't really know my recommendations yet because I haven't started using it. Presumably it'll pull down information from other Android TVs and use that, but it has not yet, so it hasn't pulled anything from my shield, but you can see here we've got some recommendations for different apps to use to get started. A list of the actual apps. So you've got a bunch of Google stuff pre-installed, obviously. It is a Google device. There's also a live channels button. I'm not familiar with this one, so let's take a minute. It says we can set up live channels from the available sources. Pluto TV is the available one, so let's give it a shot. I do not have a clue what Pluto TV is, so we'll just find out. It says universe of content loaded. Okay, and presumably now that it's done that, it says Wow, press select to access the TV menu. This is definitely interesting. Well, that's really neat. So apparently, I, I'm completely unfamiliar with this. This is new to me, but 
This just takes internet-based television, so all kinds of different feeds you can get from the web, and it organizes it into what looks like live television. And apparently you can't actually go ahead in time, so 4K TV, for example, I can't hit this Devon Supertramp one yet because it's not that time yet. But I can hit this one. Now I'm not playing this at 4K at the moment, but it's going out to the internet, it's pulling down content, and apparently running kind of slow, because as you may be able to tell, it's not on it finally buffered. Well, Pluto TV was certainly an interesting one, and that's just an option you can get to from here. Again, I'm completely new to it, so I have no idea how to get it to actually stop other than just going into another app, so I ended up doing that. I just went into the YouTube app, signed in as myself, so you can see my recommended videos. My son watches a lot of Sunday and Craner and yeah, but other than this, if you don't see the apps that you want on here, you can go into the Google Play Store and just get all kinds of different stuff from in here. You got all kinds of paid apps, including games like Goat Simulator and Star Wars KOTOR and free apps like Minecraft Story Mode, as well as Kodi and ESPN and services like Disney Movies Anywhere and Stars and HBO Now and Netflix, some featured games. And again, remember, you're going to be controlling this with a remote, but you should be able to pair a Bluetooth controller to it as well. So realistically, anything that works on Android TV should work on here. That should be obvious. Coming down to the settings, though, you can see you've got just the traditional Android TV setup here. In display, you're going to see we're at 1080p 60. That's because that's as much as my capture device will support. I'll go ahead and test it at 4K and show you that right now. As an update, I've gone ahead and hooked the Mi Box into my home theater system, main TV here. You can see 4K 2K 60Hz is an option there, as well as things like 4K 2K SMPTE, 4K 2K 30Hz, 25Hz, 24Hz, and Deep Color Mode. Deep Color Mode I don't think actually works on this TV, or at least it doesn't work in 4K modes. I tested it at 4K 2K 30Hz on the other TV, and Deep Mode did work, but it apparently does not work on this one. But still, nice to see that this does support 4K 2K at 60Hz. But stepping back out here, there's also an option for HDR. So if you have a TV that's capable of displaying HDR content, you can do that now. As far as the Daydream, this is mainly just a screensaver option, it appears to be. So you can have it do different colors or a backdrop of some form or fashion. Cool stuff. Google Cast. This is actually a Google Cast supported device, so you can actually share stuff to it directly. Very nice. And coming back to the storage we looked at earlier, total space, 5.1 gigs. That's going to be a bit of an issue. But as you did see when we first started up, if you have an external source, like a flash USB flash drive or an external hard drive, you could technically make that the internal storage if you want to. So I could take that 128 gig drive and make it my internal storage. Very nice. So might look into like a five terabyte drive or something down the road. Moving on down, you see here all these traditional settings, keyboard options, playback settings, HDMI self adaption. Not sure about that. Power key definition, but by default it's going to go suspend and resume. You can set it to shut down instead. The home screen, you get the recommendation row. You can turn off certain sources if you want to. So if you didn't want Google Play Movies and TV to show up there or YouTube, you could turn those off. You've also got apps and games rows that you can organize. So nice to see a little bit more customizability to that interface. And you've got speech and accessibility options there as well. Down here, you've got remotes and accessories. This is where you'd add a Bluetooth remote or Bluetooth controller of any kind. And down at the bottom, you see location, security stuff, usage, diagnostic information, your Google account. And of course, you can add more accounts to this if you want. And down here at the very bottom of the main screen, again, Wi-Fi settings, you can get directly to that and change it if you need to do so. And you can see now actually there are some more recommendations starting to come in because I've signed into some stuff. So it's pulling things from my YouTube account, Honest Trailers for Finding Dory, this uh, Brave Wilderness video, I haven't had a chance to watch that one yet, so definitely looking forward to that. Some stuff on Bernie Sanders and stuff from Pluto TV. And presumably if I sign into Google Play Movies and TV, it'll also pull in recommendations from that. So now that I've actually come in here, if I come back out, my recommendations will probably update as well with some recommendations. It didn't make any changes immediately, but it will over time. And if I signed into other things like Netflix and Vudu, I'd have access to all of these things all in one place. And the cool thing is this thing can combine with a Google Home device that I looked at recently to be able to actually push content from the Google Home device to this via Chromecast. So, you know, initial impressions, just sort of looking at it as an out-of-the-box product, compared to a lot of the other TV boxes I've looked at, for the price you pay for this device, you get a lot of features, a teeny tiny form factor, and apparently pretty decent performance. There's just navigating through the interface and browsing between apps, it's super speedy. The one thing I am missing out on from this as compared to just standard Android is how to close out apps. And the only way I've seen to do that so far is just to go into another app. So when I went into the Pluto TV app here, it starts up a video, starts playing something. And then whenever I go to back out of this, 
back to my home screen, it's still playing. And the only way I can get out of it is to actually start something else. And there we go. It finally started playing another video. And then we're back to the home screen and nothing's playing. So I guess let me know down in the comments if there's a way to, to stop Pluto TV without actually having to exit the app and start something else up. But so far, very impressed with this. Definitely going to be using this on our main TV because even though my main TV has smart apps built into it, they're not quite as smart as the Mi Box appears to be and they definitely don't have Chromecast built in. So this will be a nice addition to the family home theater. So let me know if there's anything I missed. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to see about it, maybe gameplay or anything like that. But other than that, thank you guys, as always, for watching. Links to where you can pick one of these up down in the video description. I'll probably put the Walmart link because that's where I got it with the bundle and everything and some bonus stuff. But if I can find it on Amazon or just the Google Play Store, I'll put links down there as well. So hit the like button down below if you like this video. Subscribe to receive more when they become available. And I will see you again next time.